Hi, I'm Heather, and today I'll be introducing you to leash work. I've been working professionally with dogs since 2004. I started out as a dog walker and slowly transitioned into the training world. It has become a deep passion of mine and I feel honored and privileged that I get to help people learn how to build a strong relationship with their dog. And I'm so excited to be a part of Halo because that's exactly what the Halo lifestyle does is it helps you build a strong relationship with your dog built on trust and respect. So why leash work? Why is leash work important? Well, it's one of the foundational components of building a relationship with your dog and also teaching your dog what state of mind we want them to be in on a regular basis. That state of mind is a calm, agreeable follower state of mind. Why? Well, because it's the baseline for everything. And honestly, that's exactly how dogs live in the world. If dogs are in a pack and just out in the wild and out and about, they're not going crazy and being super excited all the time. That's something that we as humans have introduced to them. So during this leash work activity, you'll be seeing me use a slip leash. If you don't have one, that's okay. You can use whatever tool, whatever leash you use. This will be important when turning your fences off in your Halo app, and it will enrich your Halo lifestyle because you're building consistency. You're creating a relationship based on trust and respect, and you're really strengthening that bond with your dog. Does your dog get super excited when you say the word walk? Does your dog get super excited when you bring the leash out? That's okay, I'm gonna help you with that. What happens is your dog associates the word walk and the leash with excitement. Because perhaps you might do something like, you wanna go for a walk? Or you wanna go to the dog park? Or you wanna go to grandma's? When you're getting the leash out. And what that does is that actually teach the dog that this means excitement. Now, I don't want your dog to be a zombie, don't get me wrong. I'm okay if your dog is happy to go for a walk or happy to go to the dog park or happy to go see grandma. But I want a certain level of happiness, right? I, on a scale from zero to 10, I want like a one, two, maybe three, where there's just a little bit of happiness like that. Why? Because this is the baseline that you're starting at and it's only gonna go up from there. We want a baseline where we have access to the dog's brain because if we have access to the dog's brain, that's how we can guide them. So how do we do this? It's actually really simple. All you do is get the leash from wherever you usually keep it, pick it up, walk with it, set it down. Set it down on the couch, set it down on a table. It doesn't matter. Just pick it up, walk with it, set it down, ignore it. A little bit later, go back over, pick it up where it is and put it in a different location. What this is doing is it's showing your dog that just because the leash comes out, doesn't mean we're going anywhere. You're also staying nice and calm as you do this, just matter of fact, going about your everyday business. And this teaches the dog that that's exactly what's happening, is that the tool is just about being calm. So make sure and practice this every day, multiple times throughout the day, until your dog starts settling down when the leash comes out. Do you have a pair of shoes or perhaps a jacket that also creates excitement with your dog because they've started to associate that with the leash and with the walk? No problem. Just do the exact same thing that you've been doing with the leash. Pick those shoes up, get them out of your closet, set them down somewhere, get that jacket out of the closet and set that down in another location and just move them around throughout the day. Remember, practice is key. So how do you know that, that you've done this enough? Well, because your dog is now becoming more calm around the leash, around your shoes coming out, around your jacket coming out. They now have a new association that all those things mean calm. That's their go-to state of mind. That's their natural way of being. So if that's what you're getting, awesome. You're doing a great job. You're actually ready to move on. Let's go do this. Something really important for me to point out and to remind you is that if you are using your halo collar with the contact tips, we do not want you hooking your leash onto the halo collar. I want you to use um, their regular flat buckle collar or a different type of collar. Just don't use the leash attached to your halo collar if you are using the contact tips. So now that you've made a new positive association 
with the leash, and the leash now means calm agreeability to your dog. I wanna actually show you how to use the slip foot leash and also how to actually introduce a leash to your dog so that it continues to create this calm, agreeable follower state of mind. This is Birdie and she is my fabulous sidekick for this lesson. We've been working together for a little while as well. So you may see her respond to things pretty quickly. If your dog doesn't respond as quickly, that's okay. Birdie is educated to this. I wanna help you get your dog to where Birdie is, I promise. So as you'll see, when I put the leash on Birdie, she's just gonna accept it willingly. See, I can easily put it on and off her. She's super calm. She's in a agreement stage. She's not feeling trapped by this leash. That's what I want with you and your dog. So how are we gonna create this positive association with the leash going on so that the dog doesn't feel trapped by the leash? We're gonna use food. I'm going to put the piece of food on the opposite side of Birdie so that she actually has to put her head through the leash in order to get to the food. See how she put her head through? And I'm leaving it on. I can even hold it, the food there so that she's kind of nibbling it out of my hand and put the leash on and off. So it's all positive. And she's licking the treat right now. So she's enjoying it. Then I can give her the whole thing. Make sure and practice this until your dog willingly lets you put the leash on. Have you ever heard that saying, a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step? It applies to this and it applies to your halo lifestyle. We wanna take our time and do things the best way that we can to communicate with our dog exactly what we need from them. We don't wanna rush ahead because then we're gonna have unfair expectations of our dogs to give us behaviors that they don't understand because we didn't take the time to build those steps. So now that we've created a positive association with the leash, the leash means calm agreeability, and your dog willingly accepts the leash being put on, it's time for us to start moving. But I wanna teach you something really important because before we move, we need to know how to get our dog to slow down and stop. It's just like being in a car. I think the most important pedal in the car is the brake. Because if we don't know how to stop ourselves once we get going, we're in big trouble. It's okay again if you're not using a slip leash. If you're using a flat buckle collar with a regular leash, just try to get that collar up high underneath the neck. Why? Because that's the most sensitive part of the neck. I wanna be able to communicate my, with my dog in the most sensitive way that I can so that I don't have to apply a lot of undue pressure. I'm gonna have my leash short but loose. What does that mean? It means I wanna get my hands comfortable to where they can freely move and then come down on the leash so there's a little bit of slack like this but not a lot of extra leash. Why? Because now I can do subtle movements in order to communicate to my dog through the leash. When a dog feels some pressure from the leash, they understand that that is motivation to do something. When that pressure goes away, that is education that they've done what we've wanted. And am I staring at Birdie? No, I'm not. I don't have to. Because the leash is short but loose, I will be able to feel if she's moving in front of me. And I can actually see out of my peripheral too if she's moving in front of me. I want you to feel this. I want you to connect with your dog. I don't want you to be staring at your dog all the time. That puts pressure on them. It feels weird. Have you ever had someone stare at you for a long period of time? It just feels awkward. Your dog wants to know that you know where you're going. Even if you're just taking one step, your dog wants that step to be a confident step. So head up, lead with your heart. So I'm going to take a step and stop. I want Brittany to follow me and I want her to stop with me when I stop. If she doesn't, I'm just going to apply subtle leash pressure just with my wrist to remind her to stop with me. That time I had to encourage Birdie to follow me. That's okay. 
You heard me just make a little sound and encourage her to come up with me. And then she came and she stopped. I'm gonna take another step and move forward. Steady pressure up on the leash helps the butt go down. So now I'm gonna actually combine a couple steps because Birdie is staying with me. I'm gonna take a couple steps and I'm gonna stop. Same thing, I want her to follow me and I want her to stop with me. Little pressure up. Remember, Birdie is educated. She understands this concept. It's okay if it's taking you a little bit longer. Another thing that you can do is you can take a step forward your dog comes with you, wait for them to give you eye contact and let them know that that's something good. Then you're really connecting with your dog. You're building that relationship based on trust and respect. Okay, so now that you've done well with taking a step or two, let's start to combine a few steps together using those same exact techniques that we use when we were taking just one step at a time two steps at a time, because we still want our dog to be with us. We want them to be in this nice comfort zone bubble. And again, why is this? It's because we're the ones that know how to keep our dog safe. In order to do so, we need them to be with us on leash. We need them to be willing to follow us. See how Birdie's moving away? Do you see how I just gave gentle guidance with the leash to bring her head back to me? And remind her, hey Birdie, you're connected with me. Good girl, see that beautiful eye contact? That's what we want you to look for with your dog as well. It's okay if they look around, but if they get fixated on something, just use the leash to bring their head back around next to you. Now she's in agreement. She's like, oh yeah, I'm working with Heather right now. And she feels good about it. You guys can see that. Dogs like to work. They want a job. Let their job be to walk nicely beside you throughout this exercise and throughout life. So now I'm gonna combine some steps together I'm gonna stop, I still want Birdie to stop with me. I want her to be walking with me and not in front of me. And if I need to, I'm just gonna give some subtle leash guidance with my wrist, just a little bit of a wrist movement. So I'm gonna take a few steps. I'm gonna stop. Birdie stops with me, great. If she didn't, again, I would just subtle pressure up. And you guys, as you're doing this, you can build even more of a relationship with your dog. You can actually ask them to sit, not verbally. I don't want you talking to your dog during these activities as much. We are communicating in a way that a dog naturally understands and they can appreciate that. That actually builds the trust and respect. When she's doing something that we like, I can let her know in a really nice, calm, confident way. I can let her know that she's a good girl. But other than that, I don't want a lot of talking. I don't want a lot of obedience commands right now. This isn't about tricks. This is about building a relationship and a connection with your dog. This is about teaching them how to be on the leash. This is teaching them what leash pressure means, that it's just guidance. So again, I'm gonna take some more steps. I want Birdie to follow me, and then I want her to stop when I stop. This is what you guys are gonna get if you continue to practice these enrichment activities with your dog. So today we did leash work. And just a reminder why leash work is so important is that it teaches the dog to maintain that calm, agreeable follower state of mind. Why is that important? It's because it's relationship building and it builds that relationship on trust and respect. And that's what a dog needs to follow you. Why do we want them to follow us? for safety. That's why it's exactly what Halo brings to you also. It brings you safety, peace of mind. It allows your dog to be fulfilled and to be loved. Make sure and practice often and stay tuned for more great training tips and lessons.